What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and Pulsar came out of nowhere and released an insane keyboard that has some brand new features we've never seen on a keyboard before. So if you're curious and you want to know more about it, sit back, we'll go over all the features, the good and the bad, for the brand new Pulsar Xboard QS. And spoiler, this is going to get a lot of people talking. So this new Xboard is labeled as a first edition and features something that they call quick switch technology as printed on the top left hand side, which actually has nothing to do with the actual switches themselves, but more so switching between different PCs, as this is the world's first keyboard with a built in KVM. More on that in a little bit. But it's an 88 key TKL design made from a fully CNC aluminum frame, so it's got some heft to it and feels solid overall despite the fact it's not solid. Yeah, we actually have a hollowed out bottom side underneath the keyboard, exposing the PCB, internal dampening, and I kind of really dig it. It's just like they do on the bottom of their gaming mice to cut down on some weight. At this point, I kind of feel like it's more of an aesthetic design language type thing for Pulsar, because obviously on a keyboard, cutting weight isn't a big deal, but they're keeping that design element consistent, which I think is cool. And no, this won't negatively affect or damage your keyboard or the switches, so don't worry. Taking a look around the board on the top right side, we do have a volume wheel for adjusting audio on the fly. This can also be actuated in for muting, for example. And you'll notice next to that are two additional round buttons. These aren't media playback controls. These are the main component to that built-in KVM. And if you don't know what a KVM is, it is one device that lets you control multiple computers from one device. That one device being now the X board. So on the back side are two USB C's. One cable goes to your main PC, and the second USB goes to the second PC, giving them both access. Then the additional USB pass throughs let you plug anything into here to use across both those computers. So the X board is acting as like a dock or a hub with these USB pass throughs to use on two PCs. Let me just show you. Okay, so to demo the KVM quick switch for you guys in real time, I do have the two dedicated and separate setups right in front of me. This main like intended use and like it's advertised use case for this example is like having a dedicated gaming PC setup and then a dedicated streaming PC setup here. So to show you guys, I currently have the X board plugged into both PCs with the included USB ports on the backside. And currently when I press the Windows button, as you'll see, it pops up on this PC. Now, if I want to switch PCs and determine what uh, PC that the keyboard controls, you use those top two circular buttons with the cross and the X, pretty much as like a PC one, PC two. And then just like that, when I press Windows, I'm now using the same keyboard for this PC, press PC one and PC one pops up. So that's the real advantage having a keyboard for two separate units, but also along with that, the two USB passers on the backside comes with the advantage of using multiple peripherals. So obviously you're gonna wanna use your mouse with your keyboard across both PCs as well. So I'm moving it around as you can see, I can click in, it works right there. Once I then press uh, PC two, the mouse will, the cursor will pop up and I could quickly and easily switch between two PCs with my mouse and my keyboard and have uh, that advantage now, which you probably didn't have before because no other keyboard has had KVM. Now what's really useful with KVM, especially for gamers and streamers, is gonna be with using it with an external hard drive, an external SSD, NVMe, anything like that. So we're gonna plug it into the back of our X board. And why this is useful is, say you wanna record your entire stream through like OBS, or if you're capping all your gameplay footage through uh, Shadowplay, for example, whatever. If you wanna have all that saved in addition to being streamed, what you could do is have those uh, streams in your gameplay set to record to a specific drive or a specific uh, path on your PC, right? So that means when you have your external hard drive plugged in, you can have all your gameplay being saved immediately to the hard drive as it happens. Now at the press of a button, PC2, this Seagate drive is now gonna be recognized. You see me go here, click on it, my Seagate drive is right here on my PC number two. Go back over PC one and it pops up immediately. And why that's useful is because again, when you're streaming and you're saving all that, or if you have these massive gameplay files, 
The process of manually copying those files to a drive could take a few minutes, and then putting it and then dumping it on a new PC could take a while, depending on how big your files are. Here, when it's all being saved natively onto one drive, you can just switch between your PCs and now save that entire process. So definitely a cool little advantage here when it comes to KVM, if you could take advantage of that in the first place. But also, like I said, if you're a gamer, if you're a streamer and you are saving your streams and your gameplay at the same time, this feature in itself could be useful for a lot of people out there. It just depends on how uh, much you benefit from a KVM in the end. But the export has it and it does it well. Literally, click of a button and uh, you're switching PCs. So hopefully that gave you more of an idea of what the KVM quick switch technology is and can do. Definitely cool if you can take advantage of it. PC to PC, PC to laptop even. And I know we're about six minutes in, we're just scratching the surface here. There is so much more to go over. Back to the overall design, keycaps here are a nice and thick double shot PBT set all white with a few black accented keys around the keyboard. And unfortunately, there aren't additional white keys inside the box if you don't want those black caps mounted and you just wanted an all white look. But the white does let the RGB shine and reflect nicely here. And there is this lip cutout running along the top for additional RGB glow, serving no additional purpose other than just some extra visual eye candy and breaking up that large Peyton Manning forehead of the board where the internal controllers are underneath. But with all that RGB, everything can be customized on board, and it has 44 preset effects that you can cycle between, from crazy RGB wheels and effects, reactive effects, it definitely has some of the more impressive looking RGB I've seen on a keyboard before. And the entire right side lets you change up the RGB from the brightness, saturation even, speed, function page up and down lets you cycle between those 44 effects, Function Home lets you cycle the uh, effects like a static color if you want to just keep it one color. Or you can also use the volume dial to adjust the RGB lighting as well. It's also compatible with Signal RGB if you're familiar. That lets you sync your entire setup to the RGB flowing in unison across your whole setup. Your PC, peripherals, Signal RGB is definitely pretty cool and gives you more effects to pick from as well. I will say I feel like Pulsar is kind of hindering themselves here with this white design. I feel like most people out there would prefer to have a black keyboard just to match their setup more. Not a deal breaker by any means, but you know, those aesthetics when it comes to building your setup could be a big deal to some people. Now, also, it does say first edition like we showed you before, so I feel like this is very much a first edition design with those black accented keycaps. I'm sure they're gonna release many more designs and colorways later on down the road akin to their Gaming Mice lineup that has tons of different colors and designs for each model, pretty much. So let's take a look inside. The X board here is gasket mounted, giving us some super nice and soft flex to your typing and gaming that feels like a dream and it doesn't sacrifice quality at all. People new to keyboards often see that as like a negative thing, when in reality, its soft flex feels a million times better than a tray mount board. Also helping out with feel and sound, the PCB is sandwiched with three layers of dampening foam with its polycarbonate plate. We have two in the middle between the plate and the PCB for the switches, and then one pad underneath the PCB. So you combine all those efforts with the fact that it's gasket mounted, and your result is hands down one of the nicest feeling and sounding keyboards I've ever come across. That bottom layer is glued onto the actual PCB, so you can't remove that. So this is acting like a tape mod in a way, in addition to all its absorption properties when mounted. But the real star of the show with this, or the Robin to the keyboard's Batman, are these switches. These Robin blue switches are Kale Box Ice Mint V2. A super smooth factory lubed linear switch with a standard two millimeter actuation at 38 grams and they bottom out at four millimeters with 50 grams. So a smooth light switch that combined with those keyboard materials sounds absolutely incredible. If you want, you can pop these out of the hot swap PCB to place in your choice of five pin switches to its south facing mount, but why would you? Check this out.
This is hands down, pun intended, one of the best sounding and feeling keyboards I've ever tested stock out of the box. That's the key here. There is zero modding done to this keyboard. It's super creamy and marbly. I am just floored. And I've tested and tried custom keyboards in the few hundred dollar range, all the way up to a few thousand dollars. And this stock blows everything out of the water. It's crazy. The stabilizers, also crazy good. These are also factory looped, and as you heard and saw from the sound test, like the space bar had zero rattle or wobble, just super consistent across the entire bar. And while the staves here are plate mount on the polycarbonate plate, they don't sound like your traditional plate mount stabilizers. Easily the best I've heard. Again, it's always kind of hard to fully portray how a keyboard feels and sounds in person versus what you then hear through a YouTube video, but I've never been more impressed with a stock keyboard out of the box. So admittedly, my first reaction to this keyboard was thinking it was gonna be a rapid trigger keyboard due to that quick switch typeface, but this model is not. They do have a completely different rapid trigger keyboard in the works that's probably gonna be released later down this year, and that's gonna be intended for more hardcore gamers. This keyboard, while it does play games just fine, you know, they're not like speed switches, they're standard in terms of specs. Like I said before, it's better suited for both gamers and streamers with that dual PC setup who can take advantage of that KVM feature. But that KVM feature is gonna be the main reason why someone's gonna wanna buy this, right? It should be because this keyboard is $299, which no doubt is a lot of money. And while we're here, let's talk about some of the things that I don't like about this. Price aside, first, I wish the forehead wasn't so bold and the design was a little bit cleaner, like combining those PC one and two buttons into the dial somehow and minimizing the branding. Now that's looking pretty clean. And then second, this is Mac compatible, by the way. And you know that because of the visual LED indicator that stays blue for PC or switches red for Mac, despite your color effect and PC one and two are also noted by a color-coded LED underneath the space bar. As far as I know, those LEDs can't be synced with the entire color of the board, but it looks weird just to have, you know, two blue LEDs and everything else that's doing its own thing. So besides the price tag, those two things, mainly just like visual aesthetic differences that I have complaints about, but they're not gonna be deal breakers by any means for somebody who needs a KVM keyboard because that's the main thing about this. If you're buying this, it's because you need a KVM keyboard where you have those dual PC setups and you need to be able to switch on the fly like that. So I've said it this whole time, but stock out of the box, this is one of the best feeling and sounding keyboards I've ever tried. And you combine that, the construction, how well it's made with that KVM feature, whoever needs this and picks this up is gonna be super, super impressed and happy they did. My only thing is, I don't know who's necessarily gonna wanna buy this besides those KVM uh, people out there because like I said before, they are making a rapid trigger keyboard and I feel like most people may be inclined to wait for that later on this year. Or you can get it for free in a giveaway I'm doing with Pulsar. In a few weeks on Whatnot, I'll be giving one of these away during my live stream. I'll drop a link down below so you can enter. Just follow us on Twitter, be there for the live stream and hey, you can win it for free. So the brand new X-Board QS by Pulsar, absolutely insane, came out of nowhere, dropping jaws. I'd love to hear your guys' feedback on what you think about it in the comment section down below. Do you dig it? Can you take advantage of KVM? What don't you like? Are you gonna wait for Rapid Trigger? We'd love to hear your thoughts. If you like this review, give it a big thumbs up, show your support. Feel free to follow me on all the socials at randomfrankp. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you enjoyed, have a good day.